Well, I've had an overwhelming response from you after I spoke out on yesterday's show about the revolting Chinese wet markets that almost certainly caused the current coronavirus pandemic and certainly brought the world's economy to its knees, not to mention likely causing the death of tens of thousands of people. And one of the reasons I was inspired to do so after seeing the ridiculous, outrageous treatment given to the retail entrepreneur and television personality Louisa Zisman at the weekend, who was accused for some reason of being racist after she spoke out about these wildlife markets. With her first interview, since that all went down, Louisa Zisman joins me now. Louisa, thank you so much for being here. I know this is an issue that you're even more passionate about than me. But firstly, can we just clear up, because I think this is very important to say, criticising the wet markets in China is certainly not being racist in any way, is it? No. I. Hi, Dan. I wouldn't have thought so, um, to be honest. But the reaction I had was quite violent, um, I would say. And, um, you know, it was typical Daily Mail, just to kind of what I refer to as shoddy, lazy journalism. Um, and people really missed the point. Um, the point is these wet markets do exist. They're worldwide. There's a, there, I think there's around 20,000 of them, though, in China. In China, they're really um, prevalent. And I just, it, that it's not just coronavirus that has, that is the first global pandemic that has stemmed from a wet market. And I think that... Um, it's, this, you know, SARS came from wet market. Every kind of global pandemic, when you look into it, has come from an animal. Um, and they just need to be banned. They were temporarily banned after SARS. And then kind of sneakily, when everyone sort of stopped dying from that, they snuck them back in. And look what's happened now. It's, you know, just a mm. hundred times worse. And what people have to really realise, Louisa, is that these wet markets and the consumption of this wildlife, which, by the way, includes snakes, includes tigers, includes dogs boiled alive, includes bats, includes anteaters, is not actually part of Chinese heritage. This was something that only developed uh, from 1979 onwards after mm -hmm. the Communist Party uh, re caused that great famine in the country which killed millions and yeah. millions and millions of people. Yeah, and then after that, because people were starving... They were, that's the way that they ate, you know, and then um, people got better, but then there was a market for it and the Chinese government were like, yeah, this is great. People are making their own money. We'll carry on doing this. But, you know, they don't need to do that now. I mean, the Chinese economy is huge. We all, I mean, there's not, I highly doubt one person that doesn't have something from China in their house. They don't need the, these wet markets and this kind of wildlife trade to exist. For their no, and what's so bad, Louisa, is it's actually the rich people in China, the very privileged people that eat the food from this yeah. market, which, by the way, includes, as I say, bears, snakes, kittens, mm. dogs, rats, bats and the reason why they eat it is because they've been fed all of these lies by people wanting to make billions of pounds because it's now an industry worth 148 billion pounds believe it or not and they've been fed all of these lies about this food protecting rich people from lots of illnesses and it's just rubbish and things like eating you know um tiger's brain or you know but it doesn't it doesn't just happen in in china in thailand they serve live monkeys and there's restaurants where you can order a live monkey and the monkey comes up through a hole in the table and in front of you they cut the monkey, the top of the monkey's mm. head off, it's cut its skull open and they eat the brain and that's a delicacy. But the problem with eating things like this is things like coronavirus happen and um, it jumps from animals to humans and my point was the, it shouldn't be allowed to happen. We shouldn't be here in this situation with you know, tens of thousands of people are dying. People have no jobs. Businesses are going bust. Our whole life, as we know it, has just stopped. And it was completely and utterly avoidable. And the markets are disgusting. They're filthy, you know. And I've, I've never been to China. Honestly, I have no interest in going to China. 
but I, you know, fundamentally, I wholeheartedly disagree with this particular part of Chinese culture, but that does not make me racist. You know, I disagree with the some of the ways that Arabs suppress women in some Arab countries. It doesn't mean that I hate Arabs. It wasn't a racist remark. But I think we need to stand up and go, do you know what? Someone is accountable for this. And the, the, the and it's China the Chinese government. Possible. And it's the Chinese, Chinese government, government that also tried to cover up in the yeah. first couple of weeks, even though they knew that the vast majority of people with coronavirus had actually come from this Wuhan wet market. Yeah. And even though they knew that it had transferred from bats. I mean, who can even imagine eating bats? But look, it's actually not about what people eat, is it, in a way? What it's about is the conditions within these wet markets, Louisa, because the animals are all stacked upon each other. And I'm yeah. sorry, I know this is graphic, but I have to say it because otherwise you don't actually realise. And the pus and the blood from these animals drip down through the various different cages. There's no difference between the animals that are actually being cooked and the animals that are alive. There is blood everywhere. There are literally no hygiene standards whatsoever yeah. at these wet markets. There's, there's none. It's it's absolutely disgusting, filthy, and also petrified. You know, I'm a huge animal lover. I, I don't eat any animal products. But, and it's just, even if you're, you're not a vegetarian, right, even if you're a meat eater, and that's fine if that's your choice, but you want your, you, you know, if you're eating meat, you want to know surely that it's come from a sanitary environment mm. and it's been killed correctly. But it's a culture there of because... They want, they want to see that what they've bought is what they're being given. So they like selecting the a, a live meat and then watching it be slaughtered um, in front of them. Or they like seeing the whole dead dog. Um, so that, that's a cultural thing as well. But it is, it's just completely vile. Mm. And but the point that I was making there, Louis, Louisa, yeah, it is a cultural thing you could argue, but it's not a cultural thing that dates back hundreds and hundreds and year, of years. No. This dates back to the 1970s. And actually, again, because for me, this is about the Chinese government. It's not the Chinese people. The most disgusting thing was when the Chinese government enacted this law in 1988, believe it or not, which was called the Wildlife oh, Protection yeah. Law. But by the way, they weren't protecting wildlife, Louisa. They were in encouraging the breeding yeah. of wildlife in that law. And that law meant that you saw bears, bats, turtles, tigers, all of a sudden it become totally legal for them to be sold in wet markets just yeah. to make money. And as I say, it's become a £148 billion industry, but it has to stop. It has to. And, you know, like we have puppy farms in England and we're outraged at, about that as English people, you know. I, Not many English people would agree with a puppy farm. It's exactly the same thing, but with what we class as exotic animals. So they have mass farming of, like, you know, bears and, and pangolins. I think Corona went from a bat through to a pang pangolin. I don't know if I'm saying that correctly. Yes, that's right. <laughs> a pangolin, which is essentially like an anteater. Yeah. And what the scientists think is that it, it, the coronavirus, as you say, transferred from the bat to the pangolin because pangolins are also sold at these markets all the time. It transferred to a human. And look, Louisa, just the final thing I would say, and I want you to paint a picture of it. You posted a very disturbing video of one of these wet markets. We don't know which wet market it was filmed in, but just paint a picture for me. You can go and watch it on your Instagram page, but just paint a picture of what you see because it was actually watching your video that really, really made me so passionate about wiping out these wet markets once and for all. Yeah, so the video walks you through a wet market. Now, I was sent the video and it said Wuhan wet market. I've since been told it's possibly from Indonesia. I don't know, but they're essentially all pretty much the same. But there's things like fried dogs, dogs being cooked alive, um, snakes being chopped up and so they'll be alive and then they're being chopped up in front of people. Um, there's bats on sticks, like lollipops with sticks up, bats bums, um, rats on sticks. Um, and then there's also what we'd call more, I consider more kind of normal in, in hyphenated kind of quotes, like chickens and things like that. There's darts. It's just, there's blood everywhere. It's filthy. There's blood all over the streets. The cages are stacked and stacked on top of each other. And people even are sleeping on top of the cages as well. I mean, it's just 
the most disgusting conditions you would you would never ever want to eat anything from there and i think ultimately until they're properly shut down and we've been told that there's been now a worldwide ban on wet markets actually an australian um kind of dispatches type show went to thailand only recently and they're still very much open there little tigers and stuff being sold in cages they've not been banned and until we start you know, talking out more and talking about this, we will see um, another coronavirus pandemic, yes. whether it's... Well, the world has pregnant. to rise up now because the worst nightmare has now happened, Louisa. And this might be a £148 billion industry for China, but it has done trillions of pounds worth of damage to the international economy, not to mention the people who are going to lose lives of their relatives. It's not just losing lives on corona, like the economic effects that this will have on people, people with businesses, people that can no longer support their families, which will lead to depression, which then leads to suicide. It's just, honestly, I'm so cross, I'm so angry that the Chinese government, knowing what happened with SARS, um, and the, the whole of Asia, really, where the wet markets, you know, happen, have allowed this situation no, no. to happen. They it's must be banned. We'll continue. And I think they should, you know, the Chinese government should be made to pay. They should be made to, to especially, look at what's happening in Italy. That, you know, they sent 12 doctors there, whoopie-doo. Like, they need to do more.